we're gonna talk about the 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 most obvious story of the week uh, uh the Dittler. something we shouldn't be something i said we sh i wasn't gonna talk about but we got to talk about dirty money man big dirty man yeah. the baddest boy the worst boy <laughs> the worst i mean boy. this nigga just did i mean like we we heard the stories you know what i'm saying but with the footage now it's to me it's like every thing somebody else has said about him i kind of gotta you guilty into proven innocent at this point bro i usually move by you know innocent into proven guilty even though the world don't move that way no more i try mm -hmm. to do that to people um but with this guy he's done he's cooked diddy's done and i just wanted to say that i wanted that to be the start of this show i wanted just everybody to drop their opinion if you had one on them uh we all grew up on some of that shit. we all had our times i was able to do some special shit uh during some of the bad boys anniversary stuff and it was it was a good time but fuck that shit and fuck that nigga. and that's the end of it i can't yeah. i can't justify no nigga doing what he did man the nigga threw a fucking glass vase full of flowers at the bitch. well i'm sorry the woman walking down the hallway you know what i'm saying like yeah. bro what yeah. the fuck? Like, and i think you know what's the craziest thing though about all that shit? It's like Shaka Khan's uh, daughter. Um, she was talking about how this man was like yelling at her in front of her son and got her son like jump. And then there's another story in TMZ about how this dude like raped this girl for like years and like people with Kim. And it's like every story about him just sounds more and more villainous and yet yeah. more and more believable. It's like everything yeah. that comes out is like I believe it. Like when I read that thing that he blew up Cuddy's car, I'm like, as that was the end. I was like, as much as that shit sounds like a like a something that in like a yeah, movie, Batman. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's like I believe it. That's something that he like he could get away with because he's got the access and the money and the power to do shit like that. It's just like this is not a good person. Like I don't yeah, like, my car. I'm telling. I'm telling. <laughs> I'm telling. <laughs> I'm telling. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. You gonna have yeah. to cheat on me, nigga. You, yeah, you don't have to. You call me a snitch all you want to, Fred. You tried to blow up. You blow up my car with some ass. You nah, try. You I'm tried to. You tried to send Rothstein me, bro. Like, what? Yeah. Oh, I'm like, am I watching? What am I watching? What am I Yo, watching? No, the, the, what, the, the crazy part about all this shit is just like, there's so many stories throughout the years. Like, we all heard, like, you know, through the grapevine and all of this shit. And it's just like, it's so believable. That's the craziest thing. Is like, there's not a story about Diddy that, like, that's you like told me, unbelievable. Yeah. You tell you tell me that this, like, Again, like he grew up in the nineties and went to Howard. Like I know this nigga was doing some nefarious shit on that campus. I just know he was doing some nonsense. Imagine Howard homecoming, homecoming in ninety two. Yeah, that's. Um. Yeah, you can't. I forget you can't look at Diddy the same. That shit's a wrap. That shit's dead. Now, I, it's stuff that I really want to say that I can't. That I'm not going to say on the platform because I don't want to seem like I'm disrespecting anybody or whatever and all of that stuff but orlando i think i'll just see leave it to what yeah, orlando said right there, i think yeah. this is just the tip of the iceberg of hip-hop but I not think just for hip-hop it's a tip of the iceberg of anything 90s like we were saying yeah, for anything too. 90s yeah for anything 90s and everybody around it even just when you look at this diddy situation um uh, when when the R. Kelly thing was going on, a lot of people was talking about some. There's a whole bunch of enablers. How come the enablers are not going to go to jail and all of that stuff? Why is well, if R. Kelly got enablers, well, what the fuck do you think did he got? A billionaire. Oh my god! <laughs> like this man would be the the epit he would have the epitome, the the, the epitome of 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 enablers. And yeah. if you want to be truthful, man, I've said this before. I'll say it again. And y'all thought I was joking. I kind of wasn't joking. We all enable us in this one, Jack. We all play a part in this one. Because a lot of this stuff we heard stories about and we never stop listening to it. And we do this all the time when it's some art. We do it all the time with some artists. We, we try to separate the art from the artist. In this case right here, the artist gave us the art of a whole decade. Yeah, man. You... A decade, bro. Could, at least, I'm yeah. just, but I'm just saying the '90s because we were talking about the '90s in general. He the, can't stop the night from 1990, from 1999. And if you want to be technical, you could go to 1980. The minute that man stepped foot on Uptown Record in the Uptown Records Artist Lounge, fam, to 1999, this man has been influential. And that's and before he invented the remix. Life. And 
in our <laughs> lifespan. So even when like Peloton talking about so we're not playing any bad boy music, we're pausing. Oh, we bad got boy music. We got a clarification. They're only not playing puppy music. Okay, because then the then yeah, the, then the doc, in that thing they said then yeah. you but see in what they had said it said pause on Diddy and Bad Boy. They knew damn well if they pause Bad Boy, you can't play shit. Nothing. You can't play nothing. If you say you're not playing Diddy, you can't play nothing. So what what, what is qualified as a Diddy record though? Is like because if and, and we talked about that on some dude, like what qualifies a yeah. Diddy? Yeah, that's the other day. I, I got I got this uh title playlist called Bluetooth Sundays with a whole bunch of old R and B on there. Uh and, and I had uh was it was it Gina, what's her name? Gina Campbell. Things Gina you do Thompson. Right? Gina, Gina Thompson. Thompson with Missy. Yeah, I'm all this. He, 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 and who I hear in the background? The diddler. <laughs> like you, you like you can't escape this nigga, man. Like he's on everything. Yo, one of the homies is a DJ out here in New York, right? And he was saying, like, he was spinning the wreck, and he's like, damn, like, Diddy's everywhere. And it's true. <laughs> it's like, yo, you, like, again, I grew up in London, right? And I got moved to America in 2001. And, like, literally, even in London, in the 90s, you couldn't escape his music. It's everywhere. Like, the first CD that, like, my dad, like, I physically remember my dad, one of the CDs my dad brought was, uh, he brought the Harlem World, and my dad bought Biggie CD. Mm -hmm. And this man had a this man exactly Mary J because of him, like Jodeci was because of him, like all these artists you think about. It's like, yo, he's everywhere. There's not this, there's like, not like you know, how, like people stop playing R. Kelly, like, stop that. But but Diddy is just like everything. Like, this go down, man, to, go down to Chicago, uh, block on a random Wednesday. Niggas yeah, have not but see, stopped playing but R. see here, here's the thing. <laughs> but see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You can stop playing, you can stop playing R. Kelly because it's like, yo, we got Jodeci or we got somebody else. If you don't play R. Kelly, all of these R and B niggas is Diddy niggas, like or offshoots, or offshoots. So that means, so that means, only thing we can listen to from the nineties is So So Death. And I'm not trying to hear that. All respect to JD. <laughs> all respect to JD. I'm not trying to hear that. Right? And you know, so you know, it's the wildest thing. Like Diddy's album he put out last year. That's it was album. so good. Yo, that was an amazing album. It was so good, bro. It was That's so right. good. Shout out to my boy Lil Rodney. Pay Lil Rodney his money, Diddy. Pay him I've his been holding this in. That case, that I know that nigga. I know the nigga who sued Diddy for all that shit. And he put what's the girl name? What's the girl name? Young Miami. He put all that shit out there. I know that nigga. Get that man his money, Diddy. Before you go down, get that man his money. You know what I'm saying? I know you, Diego. You messed up with them. Hey man, it's not nobody's fault, man. You shouldn't be beating up on women. You shouldn't be blowing people's cars up. It's other stuff I know about him breaking people's noses and having surgeons flew out just to fix the nose before anybody found out. I be knowing a little bit of something that I don't. I think on. if anybody who's like, of course, we know Lero. You know, uh, you know, I, I from I've heard stories, nigga chasing people down the street with guns like he's Wilson Fisk like we yeah. we've we've heard these stories like we we we've, we've either known people I I have always said that I actually I've been invited to a couple of Diddy parties I think if you've lived in LA or been in LA you've either been to a Diddy party or got been invited to a Diddy party what I tell you Scott as long as you don't stay uh, as long as you time. don't stay past a certain time once but, that red light go off it's like the purge <laughs> you better get out that room it's I'm like the purge you. nigga <laughs> You know, we stay in the club love too long, but like to me, I look at you know, the thing that's kind of stood out to me more than even just the actual Diddy thing because we've heard the stories now, you've seen the video. There's a and I said, Bang, I said it's on some dude. There's a lot of celebrities flying too close. Whoa, to this what the hell, Orlando? What you know? He's in the dog, baby. Because, uh, uh, no, what, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? Hey, whoa, leave, leave, leave Kenneth out of this. Hey, baby face punched Anita Baker. That's what really happened. That's the behind the scenes. <laughs> wow, you know that everybody <laughs> calling Anita Baker a B word the whole time. Baby face the slap. You know what oh. it sound, You know what it sound like? Sound like family guys. Like, whoa, whoa, we having a good time over here. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, we do do the fun flex. Who made you go in that first? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> But like to me, it's like there's a lot of celebrities like who are flying too close to the sun. 50, Curtis man. Jackson. Curtis, Curtis Jackson, Jackson 50s one. But you know who I, I listened to this week, and I just had to have a, like that's a funny guy, Mr. Joseph Button. I knew he was gonna say that. I watched his pod and I was like, you know, 
if I wasn't a fan of your actual music and, and hear and actually remember you saying that you actually hit Esther Baxter, I believe you right now. Because you really in your head believe what you said. I watched like the hour and I was like, it's a funny guy. Like I, I watched that podcast, like I watched Draymond when he gets suspended, act like he ain't do nothing. I was just like, you're a funny guy. You're, hey, you're a funny guy. Five thousand for nothing. Yeah, you know, right. what, it, you know what it is too, uh Larry Bang and uh, Scott. We come from a generation, right, where like we are like we grew up in like that blog era, right? We grew up in the era where like mm -hmm. there's a lot of shit that like we saw on yeah. social. Like I give you a perfect example. I remember in, in, in high school, like oh four, like when I was in high school, right? And we we're talking about Bill Cosby, and like I knew about like the whole Spanish flash shit, and like I knew he was doing that like oh four. And when it all came out, I was just like, what, what are y'all shocked? Like, this is old news. And it's just like, a lot of this shit, like, we see it, right? And it's like, I don't know if it's because of the society we live in, the way we live in, but it's just like, shit just gets swept underneath the rug. And then, like, when it's time, it's just like, yo, these people have been nasty for years. They've just been getting away with it. So, you know, my biggest thing is just like, I just feel sorry for all the victims. That's really all yeah. it is. It's just like, yeah. that's that's what it is. It's just like, there's so many people that's been going through so much shit for no that's, reason. That's my concern. That's my concern is because, fuck it, I'm just going to use this analogy, and I don't mean to be disrespectful to anybody, but this is my biggest concern because of everybody who is connected with Diddy. I don't want this to feel like the bottom bitch type of shit. And what I mean by that is it feels like to me everybody has been complicit so everybody is a bottom bitch in this situation. And then you start finding out like that this person, if you if you know about pimping, the bottom bitch is the person who recruit. The bottom bitch is the person who get everybody together. She cleans up the shit. She's damn near the assistant pimp. So anybody can be a bottom bitch in this situation. But even with this, this new lawsuit that came up, the chick that said that she was getting raped by Diddy said that she had an incident with Kim Porter where Kim Porter basically got her fired from a job. What I'm afraid of is that some of the people, because of how this shit works, some of the people where we're going to be like, yo, damn, it was messed up that they was involved in this and they were victims. What I'm scared of is that this shit's going to be so widespread that the victims are going to be people that we end up condemning because you yeah. cannot tell me, you cannot tell me when it comes to this shit right here, that everybody is clean. Yeah. They're victims. And there's people that's being take advantage, taken advantage of and all of those things. And, and, and I totally understand that, mm -hmm. but you cannot tell me that, this is not connected to some of the other people in hip hop because they know everything was going on. And you can't tell me that people might have done things to keep themselves in the limelight. That means some of the celebrities that you know and some of the people that might end up being victims who it just turns out that this shit was just a lot of a lot of shit happened to keep themselves in the limelight by either turning a blind eye to it. Or they was just getting their ass whooped and they had to mask mascara it up just to be a part of it. This is going to be nasty. And I I guess I, what I'm saying is, is that shit, it's time for this shit to get exposed. Yeah, I mean, and, and like you said, it's going to be like, you know, 90s people in general. I, when I was watching, uh, I was talking about earlier, I saw the Kevin Spacey documentary. But I was watching, you know how they be throwing them ads beginning of them on, on streaming now. There's a documentary on Nick Carter from Backstreet Boys. And the, and the lady on there was like, I know stuff about Nick. You got to get this whole place burned down. Man. So it's like, it's different people who are big in the 90s that you're going to start seeing stuff about. And Cause, yeah. cause I don't mean to interrupt you, but a lot of people learn that shit from the shit that happened to them. And that's why I said it. Like, you're going to see people that or hear about people who had shit done to them and they start doing the same shit to other people. Bro, you, you saw the Nickelodeon thing about like yeah, the yes. yeah. Crazy document, look at man. look what happened to Drake Bell. Like Drake Bell, like got a, you know he got assaulted and he did it to somebody else. And it's just like, yo, this is a sick cycle, you know. Yeah. And I think a lot of it is just power, right? People get power and just lose their goddamn minds. It's just like they can't be normal. They just they just they indulge in shit because they have access. And it's just like, yo, be a normal person, but they just can't. It's sick. Yeah. 
it's a thick cycle, man. And, you know, I just want, you know, give our prayers and thoughts out to Cassie. You know, she put out a, a statement the other day. I can only imagine it's probably even worse for her to, you know, relive this. Like, if we're seeing this and this happened to us, I can only imagine what that's like to re-see it again. It feels like the drug dealers are going to be the cleanest people in, in right. hip-hop at this point. Oh, these niggas just sold narcotics. So, you know. I, just sold, I just sold a couple of narcotics, man. I ain't doing none right. of the other shit. And paper on his player, haters on. Money on the other line, so I'm not gonna hold you. Money on the other line.